Ten seconds remaining. What's up guys, welcome back to the SLI Invitationals. We have more SA qualifiers on the way. This is the other game from the winner's bracket. So winner of this is going to move on. And uh, they do know their opponents already. It's infamous. We saw them play earlier. And yeah, losers are going to go down to lowers. And I think they should know their, they should know their opponents as well. Uh, let's see. It's Mad Kings. So no... Uh, no bracket swap there, but first of all, we got we got a fresh best of three. We may be 30 minutes late, but you know what? It's better late than never, right? I'm Mike Lars, Ninja Caster, for this game. DC just coming off of the victory versus uh, SG Esports. That's pro probably some of the stiffest competition you're going to find in the SA scene. I think most people would say at this stage, DCSA, the team to beat, the best, probably. And SGE are definitely in the talks for top three, top five, whatever you want to do. So, uh, yeah, DC definitely the favorites to make a pretty good run here. Youth Fury, not exactly slouches necessarily, but the competition is just so fierce here. Like, it's going to be really tough for any team to convincingly beat DCSA in any scenario pretty much ever. So... Here's hoping for some good games. Youth Fury, uh, good luck, because this is going to be an absolute tough one for them. Pick up a Venomancer first, not too bad. We've seen a lot of openings, including with this Venomancer. Uh, Spirit Breaker, Shadow Shaman, or just Spirit Breaker, there you go. Gotta keep yourself open. I, I like this a lot from Youth Fury. Big fan of the Spirit Breaker first phase pick. Uh, I don't quite like Venomancer as much as Spirit Breaker, but I think it's fine as well. It leads you to just any path you want to take right now like if you three want to go aggro they can if they want to push things they can if they want to play the slow game that's perfectly fine as well i don't think i've actually seen venomancer in a support role recently but is that still possible i don't think anyone has done it ever because core venomancer is just so much better but uh you know you got some options for sure and on the dc side earthshaker the pick and then nothing just yet you can't go wrong with just an earthshaker just uh chilling with that hero right now it's okay to have versus the Spirit Breaker for sure, and I think there's a fire somewhere, guys. I don't know if you'd hear that. That was incredibly loud. Holy shit. But, uh, yeah, Earthshaker is just a, a nice generic opening as well. I think, you know, Earthshaker, Spirit Breaker, Night Stalker, these type of heroes that really don't, uh, you know, force you into anything super early on. We've seen Shaker go off lane. We've seen Shaker go towards that support role. I think it's about the same as far as how effective it actually is. The most surprising thing about this so far is that uh, DC are taking this long to make this pick. Uh, Spirit Breaker Venomancer isn't, like, that insane of an opening. It's not like they first picked Amiibo or something like that. You really got to think about it. Uh, so it's just a matter of what do they want? What are they comfortable with? Shadow Shaman's the pick. That's a, another kind of Generico support hero. Is... Perhaps a little bit clunky up against Spirit Breaker. That is a little bit awkward on occasion. But they have now a lot of Disables, DC. Not any huge need for that abundance of Disables. But looking at Shadow Shaman, looking at Earthshaker, and if your Youth Fury is still lacking one of your main cores, or I guess two of your main cores, ideally you want to be picking up Heroes with BKB. BKB up against Shaker Sh Shaman. Exactly the counter that will uh, actually let you kill these heroes. And if you are one of the harder-hitting heroes, it's pretty easy to make that happen. Venomancer, though, very frequently seen towards the safe lane. Doesn't usually buy or need a BKB, so not sure if there's uh, quite going to be enough room for that. By the way, guys, uh, this is DCSA with their new player, the fourth one. I'm pretty sure this is King Tekka. I don't know how Divat Aloko translates to King Tekka, but I'm like 90% sure that's him. And uh, I'm pretty sure this guy's name is a tune. Pronounced exactly like that? I don't really know. Something along those lines. A tune? A ton? A tin? A tune, probably. But uh, yeah, they, they got their new roster and they're doing it pretty well for themselves. Radiant team pick. You can see, uh, well, Meepo being banned out. Batrider being banned out as well. That's an interesting one. I mean, it's a semi regular hero, but usually we see him. Uh, picked up with a very specific goal in mind like some hero that he absolutely needs to initiate on or some lineup that desperately needs to initiate on that one hero 
not entirely sure what that is uh, at this stage. By the way, it's going to be kicked out, and Youth Fury just trying to keep themselves a little bit uh, safe from these hard to deal with carries. DCSA just got done winning with a uh, with a Weaver, got incredibly farmed, and um, I didn't watch the whole game super closely, but they had a really farmed Weaver, and they won the game. So I gotta assume that that had something to do with it. Man, you theory are sure taking their sweet time. If they want to keep themselves open, they go for something like a Dazzle right now. I really like Dazzle Spirit Breaker. Like, usually when you pick Spirit Breaker, your sole supporter is, uh, your other support hero, rather, is uh, just going to be there on an island. But if you team up with Dazzle, you can actually uh, do some pretty nice aggressive work. Keeps yourself open as well. Or they could just not. Again, like, Venomancer doesn't need a BKB. He doesn't really need a Grave. It's not, like, that good. It's okay, Graving your Venomancer, but uh, you'd rather be Graving someone who could get some value in the turnaround. Someone like a Terror Blade. It's like, you Grave him, he'll Sunder, and then you're going to be feeling pretty good. Man, these guys are just taking their sweet time. Oh, that's why everyone's disconnecting and stuff. Yeah, okay, that would explain a lot, actually. Warlock. Oh. Oh, really there? Hello. We have ourselves a Warlock. And this is not the type of pick that I can say, oh, they pick it to counter this, or they pick it to, to do this. Remaining. Because right now, it, it just seems like it's a Warlock. Yeah, I mean, the heal is kind of nice. The lane control is... Definitely uh, what Warlock does, perhaps stronger than some of the other supports, just being able to poke at the lane. But it seems like with this pick, Youth Fury want to start to pick up some really, really heavy teamfight dominance. Now, there are good things and bad things with that. First of all, well, they kind of show their hand, right? <laughs> like, if they're going to go for a lot of teamfight, Warlock is uh, yeah, it's usually something that you want to pick up a little bit later and add that additional kind of surprise in the Chaotic Offering. But uh, it is also going to mean that they need some form of initiation. Now, as powerful as Venomancer Fatal Bonds is, like, using Poison Nova with Bonds is ugh, disgusting. Uh, you do need a way to start those fights. And Spirit Breaker is a good way of doing Five that for the first remaining. 20 minutes of the game. After that, it's just not going to work, especially when you're going up against the Beastmaster now. With that vision is going to make it really hard for Youth Fury to actually start fights on their own terms. And again, that is an absolute necessity for them. Really hard to counter-initiate with this, uh, with these heroes when you're going up against everyone on DC packing a stun. Tinker. And then a Tinker. That's, uh, eh, you're going up against Earthshaker Beastmaster already. Really, you want to go for a Tinker? I'm not really sure about this. Youth Fury still don't know the Tinker's matchups, and to be fair, there aren't, like, super bad matchups for Tinker. But the Arc Warden is picked up from DC. That is super interesting. We got a lot of vision here for DC. And you counter Tinker the same way you counter Nature Prophet. A lot of mobility and a lot of vision. And well, that's why we have the, have the Storm Spirit being banned out, but DC, now with the Arc Warden, are going to look to ground, grind out the map with a Pugna as well. This is, this is kind of bold from DC. I mean, Tinker, regardless of my feelings on this hero in this current situation, is still going to give you a absolute ton of counter push, assuming he doesn't get picked off, which again is, is certainly possible. Um, Ten seconds if your plan is really to just start split pushing up the map, Tinker is the hero that can deal with that. Five seconds like, looking at the other big counter push hero, I would say that's Coddle. If you go for this type of draft where you're split pushing all the lanes, Coddle can only handle one at a time. Tinker can kind of handle multiple, at least two at a time at worst. So, yeah, Youth Fury going to re rely on their Tinker in the late game, but a ton of team fight from them. And this is going to hurt a lot. And not in a good way for Youth Fury. This last pick of the Pugna. Now, obviously, the first thing you think about when you see Pugna is, oh my god, he's going to push your structures. And yes, he will, for sure, with the Beastmaster and the Arc Warden and the Shadow Shaman. DC want to take towers, and they want to close out the map really quickly for Youth Fury. And you, again, Youth Fury's 
high ground defense is absolutely insane. It'll be hard to actually breach it, but uh, the way you theory break out of that is by team fight, right? They have the chaotic offering, they have the bonds, and the venomancer and the enigma. Uh, it's a lot of AOE. The big problem with that is the other aspect of what Pugna brings to the table is the fact that Nether Ward is an ability. And I can't show you right now the mana costs, but they're pretty high on these spells. Tinker chews through mana incredibly quickly. And I don't know who's actually going to have time to kill off that ward from the Pugna in the midst of that team fight. Like, when you drop all your abilities, when you drop your black hole and you have the Chaotic Offering, you got to go kill those heroes. You can't afford to mess around and hit other things that aren't heroes. And yet they have to. They have to kill off these Zerven Wards. They have to kill off the Pugna Ward, or else they will just be zapped nonstop. Let's actually... Uh, Load into the game, first of all. I was going to say, let's look at some mana costs. Uh, uh, we're in. Yes, okay. Let's look at... Why... Did anyone see Huskar there? Why was there a Huskar there? But let's look at some mana costs, right? So we got Venomancer. It's really freaking expensive, man. It's not the most expensive in the world. Let's say, like, level 2 ultimate. That's 300 mana. That hurts like hell. Spirit Breaker, that's pretty cheap. Black Hole, let's say level 2 ultimate again. That's 325 mana. That is so much. Rearm is incredibly expensive considering how often you cast it, not to mention the fact you're going to be casting everything else as well. 170, 180, 190, Warlock's ultimate, 375. Nether Ward is going to be so, so insanely good in this game. Now, it's not too common to see Nether Ward picked up uh, and leveled up. Nowadays, uh, the build with a Pugna, especially a mid Pugna, is just max out Blast, max out Decrepify, get your Light Dream whenever, and then get Nether Ward kind of after that. But once he does get it, oh baby, that's going to hurt a lot. I'm not sure if I like this Radiant Draft. Their team fight needs to be really powerful. They also need to, need to make sure that uh, they actually catch everyone with their team fight and initiate properly, which is again going to be really hard since they don't really have any good initiators. Spearbreaker, the best one, and even he's not that good. Uh, if he's able to maybe like get a ton of kills and get like a fast Shadow Blade or something... Maybe they can keep making those team fights happen, but for the most part, they're just going to have to hope that DC clump up, and there's really no incentive for DC to clump up. Beastmaster will have a ton of solo kill power. Pugna can just siege towers with Shaker and Shadow Shaman very far behind him to back him up. And Arc Warden probably doesn't even need to be there. He'll just be split pushing literally all the other lanes. Let's actually put the correct overlay up, first of all. That's probably a good idea, right? I'm really, really not sure about this... Uh, about this Youth Fury lineup. If they had... I don't know. What do they need? If this Tinker was like... A Storm Spirit or an Ember Spirit. Someone who can, to some degree, start a fight from the core position. I would say this could work. But Tinker is like the exact opposite of those heroes. Like, Tinker wants to be as far away from the fight as possible and he will rarely if ever jump into the middle if he does you better make sure you win that fight or else your tinker is going to die but either way youth fury i am not exactly sure who all of these people are officially they're wearing their stand-in tags but that's fine i know shadowburn is shadowburn he's going to be on the enigma got masha on the tinker going over towards the mid lane ptt uh is on the spirit breaker for not a boast on that Warlock, and uh, Seed of Legend is on the Venno, going towards that bottom lane. Lots of stats, lots of regen. On the other end, we got Matthew on the Shaker Attune. The new guy to DCSA is handling the mid Pugna. I, again, I, I'm pretty sure this is King Tekka. I am not 100% sure, but you know, I don't see a reason why it shouldn't be. King RD is on the Shadow Shaman, and up towards the top lane, last but not least, it's HFN on the Arc Warden with a really weird cosmetic. I'm not really sure about this one. Uh, we do see charge possible for the Spirit Breaker. Three shots onto the Shadow Shaman, just to let him know what's what. Shadow Burn makes the call to bait. And he's trying. Oh, he's trying. Arc Warden, though, is really powerful level 1 because his spells, if they land, do a lot of effect, have a lot of effects. Lots of damage, lots of slow. Shadow Burn already forced out. That's a salve for sure. Laser goes out onto the Shadow Shaman, but they do shackle him. Bounty Rune is taken. 
by the dire I think yeah the arc warden were able to was able to grab that shaker's taking a lot of damage for this and there is a nice fissure onto three another shackle as well that won't kill off the tinker now king rd's in a little bit of trouble gets bashed I, I think they had that kill on the shadow shaman anyway but uh yeah they got him and ptt is certainly enjoying that one yes they went pretty deep gave away first blood but did end up getting that bounty rune is it worth it probably not in the end able to pull out a lot of regen but it's really regen being forced on both ends we'll see what they can get done with this uh, current dual lane warlock and tinker i mean i guess it kind of makes it stronger because you can do this just trade hits non-stop as the warlock your base damage is pretty high your range is high enough to keep trading with the war with the pugna and you of course have that heal for yourself or the as a nuke but uh, as far as actually killing off the Pugna, they pretty much just have to run at him and hope those those right clicks are going to do it. A quick look over at the bottom lane where we're going to most likely have a pretty passive one right now. Venomancer and the Spirit Breaker. They can kill off the Beastmaster, but I would expect Beastmaster to maintain about this distance away from the Creep Wave and should be pretty safe afterwards. Oh no, Enigma is completely walled off and is in the net and it's going to be right click down. Who's going to take it? It's HFN. Got the early bounty rune, and we see his plans. Hand of Midas, what a surprise. On Arc Warden, say it and so. Enigma summons are all well and good, but when you're blindsided like that, really tough to respond. And he actually did have an Observer Ward. How, how did he get caught by that? He has an Observer. That wasn't invisibility or smoke or anything like that for Matthew. He just walked right in. So I dare say that shouldn't have happened. If he was paying attention, he should have known there's a Shaker rotating in. Maybe you can deal with the Shadow Shaman moving in, but you cannot deal with the Fissure Block as an Enigma. That is just never going to happen. So, yeah, now forced to go into the jungle. He knows exactly what is going on. But the Shaker oh, was too far away to get that little Centaur experience. That sucks. <laughs> he just wants level 2, and he's just never going to get it. He's waiting for that Fissure opportunity. And Shadowburn, I think he's going to give it to him, right? Fissure? Got it. I, mean, I guess now the Enigma gets shared experience, but still. Matthew's going to get charged. This is level 2 Spirit Breaker. He needs about 2 or 3 bashes to get this kill. Illusion. And it wasn't off the first hit. You can see that Warlock did very little to shut down this Pugna. Base damage on Pugna is incredibly high, and he's not reliant on right clicks to get CS. He does have that Blast, so Laser is only okay. Although he is very weak right now. Walking Courier is coming out, and there's a Spear Breaker behind him. Should be charging very soon. If he can push the Pugna away from his tower, that could be a very easy kill. And here it comes. The Courier is going to deliver the bottle, so there's a chance here. He does have to Crepify, but the burst damage is too high. Masha is going to get healed up. Tower still focusing him, but finally the aggro gets pulled, and the Thinker will live. Unfortunately, that Courier was not flying, and ooh, unfortunately, the Fissure doesn't kill him either. If the Courier was flying, I think, at immediately three minutes, then I think the Pugna survives because he immediately bottles up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. It was it was close either way. Much needed kill for this Tinker. Did Tinker actually get the last hit? Yes, he did. When you go for this farming base build as a Tinker, every single kill you get is an absolute godsend. Gotta get those travels. Gotta get that soul ring. And also, you just have to push this wave out. Again, this is going to be a Pugna that's constantly pushing in. Bash? You can't bash when the enemy's decrepified. That's not how that works. But you need the March spam. Probably Soul Ring first in order to uh, make sure your tower doesn't die. Matthew's wrapped around. He's managed to dodge the vast majority of the Radiant Heroes. But unfortunately, eh, no opportunities there. What's going on bottom lane? Beastmaster is doing just fine. Behind NCS, uh, behind the Venomancer, pretty much as expected. The Venomancer, what build is he going for? Going for a very push-heavy build. This is the pushing build for Venomancer. If you're going to go killing things, you max out Gale and Poison Sting. Get zero points Plague Ward, or maybe one in very niche circumstances. But this Beastmaster is actually having a pretty reasonable time. Experience gain is coming in pretty quickly. See, the Enigma is actually behind the Beastmaster. I think his jungle speed is actually pretty fast. 
But uh, the problem is that he had a shaker <laughs> right in his face the entire time. So, kind of got slowed down initially. Oh, blast onto the Tinker. Laser is there, so no right clicks just yet. Now the right clicks come. They need another blast, though, and there's no mana. Courier just now returning with the bottle. Bad timings for sure. Oh, charge over in the bottom lane. Tekka. Well, that charge didn't land. He canceled it. Okay. You know, sometimes you just cancel your charge when you're going in a little bit too far to the tier two. I thought if you go for if you set up that much and circle around that far, like you, you gotta go for it, right? It's a full health beastmaster though. It's not an easy kill. Especially when your Venomancer goes for this build. If he had Sting and uh, Sting and Gale maxed out, I'm pretty sure they get it even through the tier two. But obviously they didn't. Shaker camping out for the tanker. Not an easy kill. Especially when you have no creep wave and gets all obliterated by the march. Spirit Breaker spending a lot of time camping out here. Really wants to kill off that Beastmaster. I'm pretty sure the Beastmaster saw him for the majority of that time with the Hawk. And again, that's what's going to make this game difficult for the Radiant. The fact that they have all this team fight, but actually starting a fight is damn near impossible. Soul Ring. Is that... That's Soul Ring for the Tinker. Travels now. The long road ahead. Shouldn't really be that hard since he is going for a march build. And I expect someone to take over the mid lane. Perhaps slide Borlock into the mid lane while the Tinker just kind of clears that and the jungle. If you can make that happen, get a fast chaotic offering. You're, you have so many options. Blast does connect onto the Spirit Breaker as is the charge to the Pugna. But it's over in the top area where Shadowburn is... Gonna lose all his Eidolons. Are you triggered by that pronunciation, guys? Get used to it. It's correct. Yes, I will be that guy. I will be that stickler. What are you gonna do? Fight me, I dare you. Radiant structures are fortified. HFN has been Radiant having a free ride on, on the top lane. Attack. Already has that Tempest double active, so sometimes you just gotta double up. And I think the ghost is gonna see the warlock, yep. They're not like could have done much about that anyway. Lots of rotations from both teams that are really not doing all that much. Really deep observer wards from both sides as well. Just make sure that that those rotations aren't going to work out. Radiant are scanning. Maxed out March. It's really hard to kill off a tinker right now because if you go in, you get messed up. They're going to try for it. Drain Blast. That did a lot more damage than I thought. And Pugna is going to claim back all the HP that he lost from that march. And a very easy kill. And also Shadowburn. Well spotted by Matthew. Thought I saw someone else there with him. But I guess I was hallucinating. Matthew's just chilling and leeching experience. That's perfectly fine for him. In the meantime, the team is taking towers. They see this. There's no way this works, right, Warlock? Yeah. That was ambitious to say the least. Shadowburn is with a large army. They are timing out soon, though. The angle for Fissure Block, it's not there anymore, but it doesn't matter. Blast Drain. It gets cancelled a little bit by that Malphus stun, but he's got a haste rune. This little dude is quick. Charge coming in, though, from the Spirit Breaker. There's no Nether Strike, so it's just a small stun. Pugna is one of the faster heroes in the game initially, so there's that. And the push continues on top lane. This is entirely the game plan for the DCSA side. Take down these tier 1s and then slowly but surely take control of the map. Like, right now they have about this much map control. Taking down the tier 1s makes it a little bit like this, and then it's going to close even more to this. It's just going to slowly but surely shrink the map. And then at that point, you're just looking for snipes. You're looking for pickoffs. If you're Arc Warden, you got your clone to do the dirty business. If you're a Beastmaster, you got your little dudes from the Necro Book to do your dirty business. Or a Blink Echo Slam or something like that. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That's the name of the game. Slow and steady. May not always win the race, but at least it doesn't end up splattered on the walls. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Shaker's actually farming mid. 
This is not supposed to be something that Shaker could get away with. Casual level 5 Shaker sitting in the middle of the lane, in mid lane, past his side of the river, and is just getting CS. And that, that's really not supposed to be happening. This, though, is going to be pretty dirty. Got Roar, Drain, with a Veil. Anyone they find and Roar is a kill. And hey, look, it's a Warlock. He's going to get blasted and drained. Ripperino Warlock. What level is he? Level 4. Still a long ways off till he gets that rock. Oh, Shadow Burn. He's in between a rock and a hard place. He's going to drop a black hole. He only has three summons, though, so they're just going to right click him down. Matthew, though, from the behind, zaps by the Tinker. Still, it is going to be an enigma for an Earthshaker kill. Very much so worth it, especially when they get this one as well. Drain Blast. Fair and balanced gameplay from this Pugna right now. This Pugna is going to be a monster. He already is a monster. He's ahead of his Hand of Midas Arc Warden. Like, that's happening in this game. Oh, Arc Warden. You dirty hero, you. Gonna go for a second, second Necrobook for the team. You can do some really obnoxious things there. I mean, as far as push is concerned, they're gonna be able to do it easily. Uh-oh. I don't know what Warlock can possibly do to get out of this, but uh, I don't like his odds right now. Charge coming in. Not quite gonna be able to save him, nor will let him cast anything. Although they are bonded up. The poison goes only onto the Beastmaster. Gale is there as well, so deny attempt, perhaps. He tried it, and Tinker's gonna come in from the back. HFN, one more stun is all they need, and missiles will clear him out. Tinker showing up with those travels behind the dive of DC, and DC paid dearly. Losing that Arc Warden is extremely costly. And yeah, he does have the Hand of Midas, so it's not like he's gonna fall behind that much. But still, that is exactly what the Doctor ordered. Kind of hopefully prey on the uh, DC mistakes is the best way for Young Fury to get these easy pickoffs and hopefully catapult themselves into their next set of items and hopefully not lose the Venomancer. That won't be good. There's a roar here. Goes onto the Venom, but the Pugna is off on the side. Can't really help out. Venomancer shocked. Not dead just yet. Hex still not dead. Arc Warden from the top side is going to lay down a ghost. And that should kill off the Spirit Breaker, right? Uh, nope. Looks like the raindrop came in. That was super delayed. What the hell was that animation? And everyone actually lives. Raindrop's MVP right now. Shaker just going to try to cheese out a kill is going to very quickly realize that was a bad idea. Stun, slightly off the mark on the Spirit Breaker, but the March shouldn't kill Matthew. Missiles, not enough mana. Oh, uh, it actually does kill him. What the hell? Did a lot of damage. And King RD also walking into Missiles. They're just feeding themselves in. I mean, I can understand you want to go for these kills, but uh, into March, into Missiles, maxed out at this point, not a good idea. DC just give a ton of cash over to the Radiant. Bottom tower is Taking really attack. sloppy engagements. Pugna getting charged out of that last fight. Arc Warden at this stage. Working with uh, a lot of gold, technically, but a lot of it's tied up in items that don't really help him all that much to fight. Tanamitis and Necrobook components. It's like <laughs> 6 strength, 10 intelligence. Wow. Arc Warden's going to be a great fighter with that build. You can just slow it down, DC. Of course, the game plan is never really going to change for them. If it does change, it's going to be out of desperation. It's them saying, okay, well, we can't really straight push and we can't lift these pickoffs. Let's just split push to make sure that the enemies don't kill our structures. Did Pugna just decrepify himself and then walk into March? I think that just happened. Top lane pushed by some snakes. Or bottom lane pushed by some snakes. Top lane pushed by the Enigma. And I guess more snakes. Serpent wards everywhere, just different kinds of serpents. Tower for tower, even trade. And Tinker can't really do too much to stop this. Matthew is being fed farm by HFN. HFN should have his book coming out to him right now, but Matthew needs that blink dagger. Then things will get really messy. Enigma is going to go for a hand of Midas. We have level 6 in the Warlock, we do. Yeah, double Midas is in fact. But they're still going slow and steady, DC. Top lane, Youth Fury still with this army. 
They blow up the creep wave with the marching machines. If they see anyone, any one hero, there's a decent chance they're able to kill that hero off. This is not something that you really want to defend into, but what other options do you have? Is that the tower fall? That's not exactly appealing. It's kind of forced at this point. They're trying to set up for the bottom lane, but that's also not super easy. Smoke up on two. That was not spotted by any Radiant Vision. Looks like they want this Venomancer. Where are you, Venomancer? They are not going to go in, despite knowing that the Venomancer is there. Oh, Echo Slam. Caught two as they're grouped up. Last drain. It's going to be combo broken by the Warlock. And it looks like both those heroes, uh, no, just one of them, will live. Shadowburn going to come in. This Nether Ward, though, doing a lot of damage. Black Hole goes onto the Beastmaster as Pugna is just being manhandled by the Spirit Breaker, but War Blast should take the kill there, and it will. Sh Missiles will also kill off the Pugna. Totally intentionally. The Necro units chasing after the Enigma. Uh, I don't think Mana Burn's in range, no. He's fine. And DC lose four for two. That was extremely expensive of a team fight. This tanker is just doing so much damage. Uh, he's able to join the fight at really just the perfect time. All the spells are already used, or at least most of them. The DC, to be fair, did not have their Arc Warden in play, but that's something you just gotta get used to when you're playing with Arc Warden. He will not be in those fights. Try to make the fight happen for the skeleton crew. Pugna isn't actually able to do the amount of damage he's really wants to do. You saw, you see those uh, green Nether Ward lines of death. Unfortunately, it was only a level one Nether Ward at the time, so though it was going off really quickly, it just doesn't do much damage right now. It's just a level one spell. You Fury doing some pretty good counter team fight work, and again, you look at these team fights. Pretty much none of them. In fact, I think actually none of them were them starting the fights. It was every single time DC starting and kind of falling short, and then the response is there from U Theory. It is not a super dependable way of making those fights happen, but so far it's working out really well for them. It will, however, pay the price in towers. There is uh, no Beastmaster here. They have Blast, they have an Arc Warden proper. And of course, Necrobook, Serpent Wards. This tower is going to be brought down mighty quick. And at the same time, they're setting up for top lane. Enigma is going to jump in into a roar. Beastmaster has quite the zoo here, but Enigma has backup. But still, the zoo does the damage. Another blink, missile, laser. That gets the kill, making it a one for one on top. Pretty even exchange, I would imagine. Yeah, it was pretty much even. Tinker, though, is getting a lot of these kills. Eight, one, and three. Jeez. Saw an insane Tinker display earlier today. And Masha looks like he's looking to replicate that. Let's see how fast that was, though, for the Beastmaster to kill off that Enigma. Took no time at all. And that book is only level two as well. So that'll only get stronger. Enigma's not too soft either. 1000 HP is, is not too bad. Not sure if Beastmaster can do the same on someone like the Venomancer. It's going to be a, definitely a lot closer. Venomancer has, I would imagine, a lot more armor. 13 versus 5, yeah. Probably not by himself. Until he gets level 3 book, maybe another item on top of that. Enigma is going into the exact same place. He does have a lot of vision here. And I don't think the Dyer necessarily know where it is. They know that there is probably some eyes in the area. Shadowburn does have a blink and a black hole. They do know about the blink. And now they do know that there's an Enigma here because these things wouldn't be there if he wasn't. You can see though DC just hunting for these kills. There's no Blink Dagger on the Beastmaster. Almost got in range for that Enigma Roar, though. That was actually pretty close. Straight push like this, though. Not really sure if this is uh, what they want to be doing. 
They will kill off these uh, these idolins though. But you're you're walking into Tinker. That's not fun. You're walking into Tinker with a Blink Enigma black hole. Super not fun. At least the Nether Ward's level three. Hmm. If you have an arcane rune and you cast Nether Ward. The ward lasts for 30 seconds. The cooldown is 35 seconds. Can you get two nether wards up with that? Because that would be pretty sick. It's only going to be a handful of seconds where they're both alive. But, you know, versus a tanker? Uh, versus a team that's relying almost exclusively on their tanker? Is that the dream? Is that what people are talking about when they say that's the dream? I'm pretty sure they're referring to that. Six seconds of double ward. I'm pretty sure that's not really gonna happen, but uh, you never know. Everything got linked up. This Arc Warden and his cloning take a lot of damage off in the trees. Oh, now what are you doing there? He is gonna hit with another strike. Lots of damage from this Nether Ward. He's gonna need some life drain, but he actually doesn't have it available. Already used it. Sitting in the Midnight Pulse, he will back off. Tower will fall, and Pugna went in super deep. Yet was also unpunished. That could have been really, really bad. Either way, they walk in, take the tower. One more tower remains for the DC side to take. You can see very little push coming the other way. They just don't have what it takes. Like They have a couple of summons, but they were camping out top lane with all their summons, and it only dropped down half. And again, once this last tier 2 tower falls, which I would imagine DC are going to be gunning for in the near future, then the game gets really awkward. It's a game where they can't really push up the high ground easily. They need a pick off, or they need a super stacked Arc Warden to kind of slow siege it. And by that I mean a super stacked Arc Warden. Going for the Necro Book first, actually only level one Necro Book, and then into the Maelstrom, is going to slow that down by quite a bit. Like, you, know, you can send the Necro units into the tower, they'll do a little bit of damage, but it's not really going to be anything impressive. It's definitely an interesting build, though, from HFN. I mean, this is pretty standard stuff. Hand of Midas travels, Maelstrom. Going for the one point in Necro Book. You you do get the Necro Books on your on your little dude, your Tempest Double clone. But you would think that if you go for the book, you go for all of the book, right? It's kind of weird that he only went for one. I, I wonder if he's actually going to just keep it like that for the rest of, or for the majority of the game, and just kind of hold this for value just for uh, and full army purposes, army in a can. I mean, he's getting enough gold to do whatever he wants, right? Is he going to be baited by a boar? Did you just get you baited by a pig? It seems like it. Spirit Breaker is going to get drained from a million miles away by the Pugda. He wanted that one boar. That's all he wanted in life. So much so that he charged it. That was, I did not expect that to happen ever, but, oh, Missile HFN doesn't quite die just yet. He is going to drop his field down and the Flux. Masha, Serpent Ward's not going to do it, though. HFN did have a Tempest double that he maybe could have sent in to get the kill. But either way, it is going to be Tinker escaping just barely. But, you know, at the same time, Arc Warden escaping just barely. He sends the clone up towards top lane to Hannah Midas and then run away. I mean, yeah, see, Necro Archer. It's not doing nothing. It's actually just... Wait, is that even his? I don't think that's even his. I don't think that was his. That was way too big to be a level 1 Necro unit. Yeah, these, these are his. Oh, people are dying, by the way. I should probably look out for that. Into immediate smoke. They have their ultimates. If they're able to find someone, this is how... This is the easiest way for you, Fury, to get a good team fight. Kind of get around the fact they don't have any great initiators with just the element of surprise. On hopefully for them one hero in the middle of nowhere. Unfortunately, there there's no one here. All well, the tire heroes are on the south end of the map, so big smoke movement not quite there. Oh, oh wait wait here we go we got a beastmaster's immediately gonna get charged put into the midnight pulse. 
and stunned up many times over. He is getting a lot of rejuvenation from this fountain, uh, from this, uh, from the shrine, but not quite enough. You know, Beastmaster right now, pretty much only with the book and blink. Yeah, no tank ability, no serious tank ability. Get a hood, get a pipe. Maybe you survive that. But he's really just an offensive hero right now, so being put on the defensive like that, not fun. The big smoke gets a hero, something. We're gonna see the map constantly being fought over as far as the creep wave equilibrium. Let's see what a Tinker can do. Let's see how safe Tinker can keep himself. So far, he's been keeping himself very safe, but uh, up against Blink Shaker, up against Beastmaster, who also, by the way, has a Blink. I'm not convinced that the Tinker is going to be able to push out all these waves and keep himself alive for a super extended amount of time. If he is able to do that, that would be very impressive, and that will give you a really good shot at winning this game. Smoke up top. Again, this is going to go real wide. That Wraith being dropped down should have tipped up off the uh, Youth Fury side to what's going on. At least there's an Arc Warden there. And if there's an Arc Warden dropping Spark Wraiths in this area, it's probably real since you don't send the fake one out there. And if there's an Arc Warden that's real in this area, he's most likely smoked. Uh oh. We got initiated on who? Roar. Not casted just yet, although he does a backup coming in from the Pugna. Backup is also here in the form of a two-man black hole and chaotic offering. Oh no. DC walk into a huge trap. They do burn two ultimates of the enemy. Three, in fact. But that was... That's just the burden of vision. The Beastmaster had no idea he was being charged there. He had no idea he walked through this Radiant Obs. And that is going to cost them dearly. This game is still incredibly close, net worth wise. Dyer's middle tower is Both under sides attack. just jockeying for position. Or initiation onto one random hero, such as almost get on the Tinker. No, you're just dead now, King, King RD, are you? Uh, looks like it. Enigma's going to blink forward. He jumps into the field, but it's a little bit too late. Gets the hex off, still is going to die. Jumping into the March of Machines, not a good idea. Although, jumping into this, a slightly better idea. If he can actually find a target, he can't. He's already down to half HP. Pugna's going to teleport in, but I don't know what Pugna can do by himself. Maybe get one of these kills, draining out the Venomancer. Yeah, he'll take him down. And it looks like that's about it. Beastmaster for Venomancer. Not that bad of a trade for DC, I suppose, but certainly you want a little bit more from your uh, Beastmaster plays. You can see Earthshaker prepping for as much anti-tinker as possible with that Yule Scepter. Also, just another way to interrupt that uh, black hole channel. Very versatile item in this game, and this game doesn't seem like it's going to be over anytime soon, so might as well go for, you know, all of these items. Go for everything, because you can. That's why the Hand of Midas is on the Youth Fury are going to work into play. Enigma's had his for a long time, Venomentra has had his, I believe, for even longer. I guess there is double Midas on the DC side as well, since they do have the Arc Warden. What is this? Force Staff? Hurricane Pike? Yeah. Dragonlance first, obviously, but uh, it's like he just wants to start stat stacking. I mean, he already has that Mjolnir. He's doing, in theory, if he's able to find a target and actually right-click them, a ton of damage. Never finding the Tinker. That's the only reason why you do this as an Earthshaker. You have the observer in the area, you know that, hey, if I was a tinker, I'd go down here soon. But not quite yet. Where are you gonna go, tinker? Are you gonna take the bait? 
Uh oh, did I just kill the tinker? You blink right here, right? Uh oh, Masha, you're in a lot of trouble. Chain stun is perfect. Light drain to death. It wasn't much of a chain stun needed. 860 gold being drawn for the Pugna. And in the meantime, the rest of DC, they're in Roche. Aegis still on the deck, killed by Roshan. Uh, killed by the Dyer, rather. Where is this Aegis? I don't know. It's finally picked up by the Arc Warden. He's going to lose it immediately, and the Beastmaster will die in the corner as well. Sir Moran's still firing, though. Not onto anyone useful. It's just the Warlock Golem taking the damage, and the Arc Warden going to put his back to the back of the cage and right-click to his heart's content. Finally, we'll get out of there in the south end. They found the Enigma. Drain him of his energy. And Pugna and Earthshaker, dynamic duo looking for more. They see a Warlock. A little bit out of range. But ultimately, the Dyer do take both the kill of Roshan as well as the Aegis. Don't, don't really get a ton of value out of the Aegis, but you know what? They take three heroes down, including the Tinker beforehand. So because of that, it's time to chip at these structures. This isn't going to uh, get any tower kills or anything like that. Unless they kill off this Venomancer. Pugna appeared out of nowhere. What the hell? He must have traveled in and blinked to the south. I missed it. Venomancer sure as hell missed it. This might actually take down a tower, and that will be huge. They're going to fall back because Tinker's going to respawn. Jeez. You see that damage from this Nether Ward? That's what I'm talking about, guys. This Nether Ward can be, in this game, absolutely disgusting. This is pretty disgusting as well. We have level 2 travels here, and they're going to find Matthew. Yule Scepter will dodge the Nether Strike, but I'm not really sure how he gets out of this. Actually throws in the Echo Slam. Roar goes off onto the Tinker. Maybe this was a bait after all, because Tinker is so much more precious than any hero that DC have individually. Matthew even survives thanks to the heal from the Pugna. Now the suck goes the other way onto the Spirit Breaker. PTT is still not dead just yet, but they will keep everyone alive, and they do snipe the Tinker. Oh my lord. Pugna is a fair and balanced hero. They kept the Shaker alive. That's why you Echo Slam, guys. That's exactly why you do it, because you know you have backup, including a very balanced level of healing. And now back on this bottom lane. Top lane is being pushed by the Beastmaster and his zoo as well. But this is where the serious push is. Are they going to commit Serpent Wards yet? Yes, they are. They see the Spirit Breaker, and they just drain him to death. Oh, my God. Dare I say, debated for a second time? Now the gates are wide open. Top lane is still pushing in, mind you. We're going to take a look at that in a little bit. But uh, Serpent Wards, right clicks from the Arc Warden and the Blasts. I, I just said this game was going to last for a long time. And all of a sudden, they take Rax. A uh, little bit of damage being done to the top lane. Nothing substantial there. But I think I may have just cursed Youth Fury to lose this game. By saying it was going to be uh, over quickly. Or over in a long time so um, that's my bad guys I didn't mean to do that oh man this Pugna and Earthshaker combo enough stun duration to get that Decrepify Blast Drain you know 300 per second without factoring magic resistance or anything like that or intelligence uh, spell boost whatever it's called spell amp yeah it does a lot of damage it does a lot of damage per second you only need a handful of seconds, and Shaker's doing damage as well. Speaking of, find themselves a Venomancer, and look at the machine gun from the Arc Warden. They do drop the Chaotic Offering. Lots of damage being thrown out by the Tinker and his Bouncing Laser, but no one's actually dying to this. The Nether Ward is doing so much damage back to the Tinker. They'll drain out the Spear Breaker. They'll blink forward looking for more, but I don't think there's anyone to be found here. They have disengaged far enough away from the Nether Ward, but still, that's the least of their problems. The big problem is, they just used the Chaotic Offering and got a big fat goose egg. And they will lose their tower. They still have a black hole. But at this point, man, you got a black hole. Four heroes? Something like that? Top shrine, Top shrine under attack. The Shadow Shaman's going to go for the Aghanim Scepter. I haven't seen many Shadow Shamans go for this since they reworked it. I think I've saw, seen one. It makes the Serpent Ward's like, super sniper version, but... It used to just, like, double the effectiveness of Serpent Wards, like, double damage. Maybe a little bit too powerful when you have the, uh, Serpent Ward talents. Plus more Ward summons, give them one more, uh, HP. Where is the Tinker? Yeah, this is where we play the game of Where's the Tinker. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not going to find him by doing that. The 
But really, the only way that uh, you Fury hold this in this game is split push from the Tinker. That's all they can really do to hang on. And even then, while they're doing that, they are sending many creep waves into the DC side of the map. And you know what happens when you pack? <laughs> you get a lot of gold in the Arc Warden. That lightning, though. Oh my god, he got so much gold there. <laughs> he just killed an entire wave, plus a full set of Enigmas. Eidolons. Eidolons. I apologize for mispronouncing that word. Do you know what I said earlier, guys? Close the map off, look for pickoffs. This is what Beastmaster is doing right now. He knows that if he makes contact with anyone, he can get his Pugna in and it'll make short work of that hero. Obviously, it's not going to work all the time, but uh, he's walking around with the gem and with the hawk. And, of course, with a million other summonables. So, the Radiant right now have a Sentry Ward on the map. And that's it. Oh, no, they have two Sentry Wards on the map. Other than that, they are completely blind. The amount of lane control they have is, is about over here. And the Dire have actually everything else. In this type of game state, guys, you will see DC waiting for Roche and looking for pickoffs at the same time. But more importantly, you'll see all of DC heroes climb in net worth faster than that of Youth Fury. Like, of course, HFN is going to be getting a filthy amount of gold. Pugna's doing his job pushing the waves as well, so he's getting cash. And I'm pretty sure everyone else is just jungling. Yep, see, King RD is doing his business. Matthew was looking for Tinker kills, and I'm sure he was jungling as well. And, well, Warlock's doing nothing. He's sitting in the base. Spirit Breaker's doing exactly the same. So in this type of game state, net worth is just going to constantly be rising in favor of DC. Now, Tinker is going to be getting some cash. Enigma, maybe some cash as well. But it's just pennies compared to what DC are getting right now. DC, with this game state, have all the time in the world. If they want to push, Nether Ward in this spot is pretty hard to deal with. They can go close and hit it, but if you do that, you're probably dying. Because th at that range, you're in, you're going to get hit with Life Drain. Serpent Ward's deployed up towards top. Got a clone going in pretty deep to look for a Warlock kill. Or just will just to do general damage. He's just focusing the buildings now over in mid cracks. Finally charge in towards top, but he hurricane pikes out away and turns around with the flux. With the wall to the spirit breaker, you sir have overcommitted. And they do take down the melee racks. Two serpent wards. I believe in you serpent wards. Okay, never mind, they're dead. Well, they take a buyback out from the spirit breaker. They take racks and a tier 3 tower, mind you. And they expend. Serpent wards? <laughs> Big who cares? Serpent wards are so expendable at this stage. Uh oh, they might lose the spear the earth taker though. He's gonna turn around for a fissure, can't even drop his totem in time. If he did get that, there's a chance Arc Warden would have been able to come in for one kill in response. Uh oh, Tinker. That is the last thing you want to see as a tinker. No more map control. What do you do? You just die from a million miles away because Pugna sees you for a split second? Yeah, sure. Even at full HP, so he gets that mana. No no cost at all? Thank you, Ice Frog. Thank you for blessing Spooky Skeletal Man with all these abilities. Oh, yeah, that's a funny. I was like, really? Are they really going in mid just like that? Range racks damage value. Eventually, these buildings will fall. And I don't know what you theory can do about this. Like, if they had initiator, again, like a storm ember type hero from the mid lane. Well, I'm pretty sure they would have been run over because they really need a tinker at this junction. But if they had some way of initiating on someone, they could actually go out and smoke and look for someone to kill but they can't if they walk into that they might walk into one hero and blow a black hole or use their chaotic offering and then they're screwed because that's just one hero dead and even that even happened up here like they even found that one hero 
and they still couldn't kill him. They got jabated in so far and ended up losing everybody, and they didn't even get that hero. Charge is going to find the Beastmaster, but again, Baron Balance Pugna off to the side. Another ward does get deployed. Roar off onto the Enigma. There is a clone here from HFN. It's going to fall soon, but it will do a lot of damage beforehand. Pugna also explodes in the background as missiles fly absolutely everywhere. Echo Slam coming in, though. Explodes the Venomancer with an Enchant Totem combo. Kills off the Warlock. HFN still kicking. They drop the Serpent Wards, cutting off the Tinker's escape. They are going to soften him a lot, with HFN still perfectly healthy. He'll kill off the Tinker, who has no buyback. It's only Venomancer alive, and that is going to be game. Jeez. Yeah, DC. Take a little bit of a, of a slow 10 minutes in the early game. But man, DCSA strike back big once they're able to get their few items up. These blink daggers, these ways to catch Tinker. And what we, we really saw here is the fact that uh, this Radiant Draft from Youth Fury, with no way of initiate, had all that team fight power and nowhere to spend it. It's going to cost them this first game. Guys, this is the best of three. So we'll see what's going to happen in the rest of the series for the SLI. Invitational again. Winner of this faces up against Infamous. Loser drops down to face uh, Mad Kings. I'm Mike Laura. It's been a pleasure casting these games for you guys. We'll see if DCSA can close it out, or if you're going to strike back in just a little bit.